It's very hard to briefly describe the experience of Game of Thrones because everything about it is so huge. <laughs> um, it's kind of like doing a TV show on steroids, right? It's like, it's everything that you normally do on a TV show, but times a thousand. For me, when I was younger and we had guests would come to the film school and they were actually doing what I hoped to do, and they weren't born into it. They had to kind of work their way towards it. And you see, well, if they can do it, then I can do it. And it's not so impossible to reach for that thing. So I think just almost just being there and being present and telling your story can be inspiring to people because then they feel like, okay, it's not so far away, that thing. The most challenging thing about being a director, I think, is that you wear a lot of hats meaning that you are a therapist, you're a policeman, you're a captain of a ship, you are, uh, you're everything to everybody, basically. You're helpful to the crew, you're helpful to the producers, you're, you know, you're serving a lot of people and serving a lot of needs. And I think that's, that's what makes it not a job for everybody, I would say. And all that's on top of the creativity, of course, but um, you know, there are a lot of managerial things that you have to do and, and a lot of things you have to be while you're being creative. I think the thing is that you're, you know, when you're directing, you're always um, stimulated. You're always, you know, thinking and processing and trying to come up with solutions to problems. And a problem isn't necessarily a problem. A problem is sometimes a creative thing. It's like, how do I approach this in the most interesting way? Or how do I deal with this thing that's suggested by the script but is not so obvious how to do? Or how do I talk to an actor so that they can actually do what I want them to do without telling them exactly how to do it. And so it's, you know, there, there's so many things that kind of keep you engaged as a director every second of the day. Like you're always thinking and always planning and figuring out. And that's, it's such a creative activity really that you never really get tired of it and you never, you never feel like, okay, now I've done it and, I'm, and there's nothing left to learn and nothing left to do. Because every scene, every show, every everything is a new thing and you never really, solve everything. You solve the thing that's right in front of you. And so there's always more things in the future to do. The oh my God moments are really like when you are, sometimes you're just stuck and you just don't really have a solution that makes you happy. There's always a way to do something, but you want to find a way that really makes you happy, that you feel like you're really doing it the best possible way or you're doing it in a way that's really interesting. And sometimes you just get stumped. You just don't really know. Or you don't really know how to say the perfect thing to the actor to get them to do exactly what you think is required. And you really have to kind of search your brain, you know, to kind of, you know, do that. And um, so those are always kind of like so scary moments where you think, oh, now I'm, I'm going to be exposed as a fraud and everyone's going to know that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, usually that moment passes, <laughs> inspiration comes back, and you're back in business. <laughs> the talent moves between cinema and television in a very invisible way now. Like, there's no border anymore. So movie stars are doing television shows, and big movie directors are doing TV shows, and TV directors are doing movies. And it's, you know, there's no hierarchy really anymore. Um, and increasingly movies, at least the mainstream movies, are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and becoming more like blockbuster movies and that's kind of what defines cinema in a way, aside from a very small percentage of art house cinema. Um, and TV is characterized a little bit more by extended storytelling, more sophisticated, complex storytelling, which you can't, it's very hard to do in movies right now because it's very hard to finance those kind of movies. And the audience isn't there for it. It's, if you put a drama in a movie theater, nobody's gonna go. That's the problem, or a very small number of people. And the studios or the people who are financing movies want a bigger margin. They don't want a, a small piece of the pie. They want a big piece of the pie. And so for movie makers, it's very hard to make these kind of movies. And so they end up going to TV where you can tell stories and you can do very complex storytelling. Um, it's just in a different medium. But you can treat it very cinematically. You don't have to be limited by the fact that, you know, it's not, you know, it's the screen is smaller, but it's not a box. It's not as small a box as it used to be. It's a more interesting box. <laughs> you know, you normally would have a crew of 40 people, you have a crew of 900 people. And you normally would have a cast of seven or eight people, and now you have a cast of like 40 or 50 people. And normally would have like 30 or 40 extras, and here you have 400 extras. And so, and you know, might have like a few little visual effects in something, now you have a million of them. So it's, it's using all the tools that you have as a director, all the things that you learn over time, 
but you you have to apply them in a very um, macro kind of way. You know, it's not doing like little things. You're just doing big things all the time. So you still have a story to tell, and you still have characters, and you have intimate moments, but everything about the production is complicated, um, just in terms of the way it's shot, and also what the story requires. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's like normal, but bigger, a lot bigger, is really what it is. When I read that last page of the script, I went, oh boy. And, <laughs> and you know, the first thing you think is just like, I have no idea how I'm gonna do this. But then you start to like get past the first kind of like overwhelming, you know, reaction. And then you just look, okay, well, what really is going on here? You know, and then you start to break it down into like digestible things. And then you figure it out. I mean, every, I've done so many things that in my life when I read them, I was like, oh, I have no idea what we're going to do. But then it's always the same process. You just start to like really examine it and pull it apart and think about it in details and yeah, and also because I've been through this so many times, even though I've never done that, I've done so many things that I always know that there's a way through it and you just have to kind of take a deep breath, you know, read it carefully, read it over and over and over again, let it sink into your brain, and then you figure out a way of approaching it. But, you know, if it was 20 years ago, I would have freaked out probably, but, you know, now I'm a lot older and have a lot more experience. So, you know, these kind of things don't scare me. And also with a show like Game of Thrones, like, you see what other directors have done and how ambitious the show has been, and you know that everything is possible. So you, you know that it's the, there's a process to get things done, and I'm not the first person to do it, and there's always a way through it, and you know, there's a lot of responsibility, but you figure it out. Going to the different campuses was really interesting. Um, I think you know, young people and film students are the same everywhere, like they're all, Everybody's interested in the same things. Everybody sees the same things. Um, the, you know, our culture is very uh, accessible now. Like there's an international culture of things. So people are very aware of what's happening all over the world. Um, everybody has seen Game of Thrones. It doesn't matter where you are. <laughs> I, I'm really inspired by young people because they have so much energy and everything's so new to them. And that's kind of great for someone who's old and tired like me. <laughs> so it's, you know, people have a lot of energy and there's a lot of creativity and a lot of excitement about what they're doing. And you do see that at the campuses actually, that like people, I, I, I can tell and I've been told that people work like all night long and, you know, they'll go in the studios and they'll, you know, play with things and they'll make things and they're, you know, there's such an energy for it. And I think that's really amazing, I love that. You know, for me, it's, what I love seeing with young people is that there's a real thirst, you know, they're like sponges, right? And that's really good. And I remember when I was young too, that I really, I just wanted to absorb everything and I wanted to see things and hear things and go to plays and go to art galleries and, and listen to people talk about what they were doing. And like everything feeds into the computer or feeds into the machine. I never aspired to be big. That's not really an aspiration. I mean, I think the aspiration is to be good. And when you're, if you're good and you learn your craft and you have something to say and a way of saying it that's interesting, I believe you will be discovered and people will recognize that you have talent and that you have a way of looking at the world that's interesting. And then when they recognize that, then you, then you need to be sort of smart about your career and be ambitious in that way and that's helpful. But I think, you know, really what you have to do is, is do the work. You know, you have to understand what cinema is, you have to understand what your job is as a director and how to do that properly. You have to understand what it is to be a creative person and find your own voice and, um, you know, how to set yourself apart from other people in a way by being specific and individual and not copying other people and all that kind of stuff. And that's a big part of it. And then the other part of it is to be a decent human being, I think, which I think also helps a lot because, you know, it's, it's a very challenging business and there's a lot of people doing what you want to do. And if you're a jerk, then it doesn't help you at all. It's, it makes it much harder for you to do what you want to do. So I think you have to kind of navigate the world in a, in a way that's really positive. And you have to really, really, really do the work. You really have to do your homework. You have to understand what this thing is that you're trying to do.